Right, so in the last episode of Clutches, we had it that um, I had the wrong stands on there. We've now got some good second-hand stands that we've fitted. Uh, then it's a question of putting the flywheel onto the back of the crank. For that, we use Permatex Red um, to lock it onto the flywheel so that the bolts don't come loose during a run. Um, this is pretty, you know, bolts do come loose and especially if you have a rod let go or whatever and it can shake the back of um, the flywheel off the back of the crank. So that's why we use um, the red to put it on there. Right, we've come across and how do we contain that clutch in the event of an explosion or just purely for safety. What we use is a nine and three quarter trick titanium cam. This is basically solid titanium it's about a quarter of an inch thick or about seven mil thick. Inside of here is, we've got an inner liner of steel with a shear bolt down the bottom here, which you can see on the bottom. In the event of the clutch coming apart, it hits this shield and this shield just shears the bolt and it just turns in here and it will stop it coming out the cam. As you can have a look in here, I mean, obviously this one's at a couple of dinks in it before from where fingers break and um, it makes a bit of a mess but with these shields it stops it from coming apart. On here you can see our clutch shaft and a spigot bearing that goes forward. This then onto here this is when we talked about the clutch cannon this is how you make the clutch engage so as you retract this Hydraulic cylinder here under clutch, under hydraulic pressure, pushes out so that when you're on the line, it is, this is fully forward. And then during the run under timed um, circumstances, this retracts back into the back of here and it allows this clutch here to come all the way back and engages all the fingers on the clutch. Right, we now go to put the, the titanium can onto the back of the engine. Now this is held in place by four three quarter inch studs and 15 7 16 studs. Um, so it's held pretty securely so it can't hopefully come off. This is all pretty easy in the workshop. I'm not a clutch guy, I just um, This is for show purposes only. You need a younger person to put these clutches in the amount of weight that they are and um, the amount of time it takes. Obviously, everything, everything in this, this is on a time frame. When you're, you're working at the track and sometimes you've only got hour and 15 minutes in between runs, it's, um, you know, the guys who do the clutch, I take my hat off to them because they work real, real hard, and it is hot, and it's a messy, and it's probably the messiest job out of the whole lot, but to me, it's probably one of the most satisfying. I always used to do the clutch in my father's car and on my cars when I started off. So it's something that, I've never actually done it with a, a fuel car. I just do the hat, and as I said, I leave it yet let younger guys actually do the clutch and set it up. Shaft goes in the front of the panel. This is the reverser. Looks small and simple. At the end of the burnout, what you're using is you just use this and it is simply a forward and reverse. That's it. There is an idea of drag racing is to keep everything as simple as you possibly can. You don't want to get too technical with these things. Get it in.
So here we've gone, we've now got the reverser on. Um, this is held in place by six, six bolts. And how it directly connects to the rear end is, this is what's called a Greek coupler. Just slides in, as you can see, it engages in teeth in here, and it's got this teeth on here. So you just slide it straight in, it's held in place by these two collars, so it can't come back out. Right, so now we've seen how it fits in the rear end here. This is a Christman 12 inch rear end. Uh, you also have strange 12 inch rear ends, which are used mostly on fuel cars these days. I've always preferred the Christman, but, but that's just my preference. From there, we this year we had to fit new carbon fiber rotors. So with that strange, actually do a kit for Christman rear ends. So there's, these are the strange calipers on 11.5 uh, carbon fiber rotors which they do a, a kit which is pretty convenient just a little bit of machining and they fit perfectly right what you see here these these lines here these are lines for the parachute cables with levers up into the cockpit but we tuck them in there just to keep them out of the way this is a drive shaft sensor so this tells us what speed the rear end is actually doing in real time which screws into here, goes down, touches on the crane wheel, and bring it back three full turns, which is about 0.125 of an inch. So we take it out there. Also, to check, as against the speed of the rear end and the speed of the front wheels, if the front wheels are on the ground, that's true speed of what the car is actually doing. So consequently, you can check real speed as against speed on the rear end which shows you whether you're spinning the tire and how violently you're spinning the tire but don't quote me on this but Goodyear I believe that said around it needs to maintain on black track down the track and maintain its uh, temperature it needs about 15 percent wheel spin I'm not sure on that I mean it is only what I've heard but this is um so this is why we have a sensor on the front and we have a sensor. This goes into the data logger, which will be a story for another day.